It is time for Around the 412 with Smitty and Tyler. Welcome back to another episode of Around the 412. I'm Tyler. With me, as always, is my co-host, Smitty. Be sure to go follow us on all of our social medias at Around the 412. While you're listening to the show, go check out the description. We've got everything custom designs, Facebook link. It's our friend Haley Wagger, small business. She can do some customized clothing for you. You get some customized Around the 412 merch, which now includes some mugs, some clubs, cups, tumblers, that's all that sort of stuff, along with the clothing side of it. So go check that out at the Facebook link. And also go check out Keek's Barbershop at The Cut. Go schedule a barbershop with him. He's up above my head right here On if you're watching over on YouTube. Um, so go check out Keek's Barbershop as well. Uh, this is the Steelers Show. Special show today. Why is it special, Smitty? April Fools. Just kidding. We don't have a guest. We got you guys. No, I'm kidding. Uh, we do have a guest on today's show. If you follow us on social media, we put it out there. You know what? I thought that we should let the late, great Franco Harris bring our guest in the same way that he did during the 2021 NFL draft. Franco, take it away. And there he is, our guest on today's show. Pat, uh, regardless of the fact that Franco Harris did not pronounce your last name correctly when announcing you as the draft pick, how cool was it? That's the first question I got for you. Let's just jump right into it. How cool was it that Pat, I'm sorry, that Franco Harris announced you as the selection, being that he was also a Penn State guy, Pittsburgh Steelers legend? How awesome was that moment? Yeah, man, it was, it was really special. Um, you know, obviously, uh, ever since that moment, me and Franco, uh, you know, kind of became close. And, um, you know, I still text this day with his wife, uh, Dana. Oh, wow. and, uh, yeah, they're an awesome family. And, uh, you know, you know, Franco was, was a hell of a guy. And, you know, he, uh, our relationship kind of hit the ground running uh, ever since uh, he announced my pick. I still give him crap about how he pronounced my last name. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, yeah, I still hear it incorrectly at games every single Sunday. I'm just like, yeah, you know, it happens. Well, Lot, What's man. funny is that we were also talking before you even jumped into the call that not only did he say your name wrong, but normally it goes name, position, school. And yeah. I was like, he it just has to be because it's a Penn State guy. He has to shout out Penn State immediately after calling it out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Penn State guy. Um, let's talk about the draft night, though. I always ask when we have a guest on here, that's where we start the conversation, regardless of what sport uh, they are in. What was the draft process like for you? I want to take it way back. I'm not even talking about draft night specifically, but like the entire draft process for you and going into the draft night. Did you have a feeling of like the Steelers interest? Did they keep the cards close to the vest or were they not shy about their interest in you? Yeah, so going all the way back, um, you know, my my experience was unique, obviously, uh, with COVID, like, just kind of, like, right. being, like, a mid-range of it. Like, they still didn't know if they are going to have a combine or not, but we only went from medical, so it was kind of like a half combine thing. Um, but mine was definitely different because I, I couldn't test or do anything because I was recovering from my, my shoulder surgery uh, that I got late in the year at Penn State. Um, so I was recovering from that. and So it was basically, for me, more, for more medical and more, like, skill work and like board work and stuff like that. Um, you know, I was able to run routes at Pro Day, but that's really all I could, could do up at that point with the injury. So a lot of it was based off film. Um, and on draft night, you know, um, there's, you know, my agent made like a list of teams that, you know, were, were in on me and were not. And, um, you know, there's a couple picks that like before Pittsburgh that I could have gone to. And then um, I saw the 412 area code pop up and I knew exactly where it was because I have some family out there. Um, Obviously, being going to school at Penn State, I kind of knew people from Pittsburgh with that area code. So, uh, yeah, it was cool. Um, I kind of knew they liked me a lot, but, um, you know, I figured yeah. it. My agent told me, like, if I was at 55, that they were probably going to probably gonna take me, which was, it was awesome. 
Interesting. Okay. Yeah. I was curious, like if they were really like zeroed in or not like, so, but you were, you were planning for anything. Like there were several teams yeah. that you thought could pull the trigger. Yeah. There was like 12 to 13 teams that like, that like had like the green light. Like if I was there and the board fell the right way, I think they would have drafted me. Um, so it was good. It was good. I mean, I had one, one meeting with Pittsburgh, like via zoom. Cause we only had zoom. Um, yeah. and it was like 10 minutes. It was short, sweet. Uh, you know, I'm kind of like a nice. guy say how it is. And so yeah. that's how the interview went. And then, uh, yeah, it was, it was great. Well, that's interesting now because like, as somebody like that tries to follow everything and like reel into the draft and stuff like that, I try to read the tea leaves and the Steelers typically aren't too good at keeping cards close to the vest. Like last year, I feel like it was no surprise. Broderick Jones going back to the year that you came out, Najee Harris in the first round, everybody knew that that was going to be the pick. It's funny. Cause we say like there were three picks that year that were in Sharpie and they were one Trevor Lawrence, two Zach Wilson and 24 Najee Harris, which makes no sense that that many picks could go by with a pick being in Sharpie like that. But uh, that's interesting to hear. But, like, the uniqueness of the experience for you, I guess, is probably why it was that way. It was probably hard to get a read of what teams were doing and thinking in general because of the way that 2020 was going into the 2021 draft. Yeah, it was really hard. Um, you know, I, I mean, I talked to Tennessee, like, the day of the draft, and they were like, hey, like, you know, we really like you. Like, we think we're going we're gonna to draft you today. And then they – I forget who they draft. They draft someone before me, and same with kind of like Indy and Jacksonville. There's a couple teams that I was like, all right, like Jack pick. Jacksonville was actually the one I thought was going to take you. To be honest, yeah. I remember doing mock drafts that year, and I was I had it in pen Jacksonville. I, dude, I, I, when they got to pick like I think they had 45 in the mm -hmm. draft, I was like, all right, like I'm going to probably end up going to Jacksonville, and then they didn't pick me because my tight end coach at Penn State was just got new there, and he was kind of like, yeah, we're going to take you for there, and I was there, and they didn't take me, but nothing, you know, it, it worked out the best best way possible. Right. Um, all right, Pat, I don't want to wait too long to get into this discussion. You know, we got to ask uh, the quarterback situation that has taken place over the offseason. I mean, you've caught passes from a lot of different quarterbacks here for the Steelers, and none of them are on the roster anymore. Russell Wilson coming in, Justin Fields coming in. I'm just curious as to like what that's like for you. Like, do you find out in the same way that the fans find out just on social media? Like, oh, we're signing Russell Wilson or we're trading for Justin Fields. How does that information get passed along to you? And man, what is your reaction to a guy that has won a Super Bowl already and Russell Wilson had already won a Super Bowl before you came into the league? And then a guy that came in in the class with you that you obviously are very familiar with being a Penn State guy and Justin being an Ohio State guy. Yeah. Um, so first, uh, you know, it, it's been a lot of change, but, um, you know, we're trying to win, trying to win a Super Bowl and just obviously trust what the front office does. And, um, you know, I found out the news um, the same way you guys found out the news. Um, you know, my girlfriend, was getting, yes. my girlfriend was getting ready for work and she woke me up. I'd be like, oh, you guys found Russell Wilson. So that's how I found out. <laughs> oh, wow. And immediately. All right. immediately <laughs> um, but, uh, I thought maybe you saw one of my tweets. I wasn't sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, your tweets do follow up before I follow you. Um, but yeah, no, they uh, I found out the same way you guys do. Um, and, you know, obviously I'm very excited, uh, um, you know, for us to be a part of the room, a part of the team, um, have him as a quarterback. Uh, you know, he, uh, I was just down there in San Diego with him working out and uh, throwing routes okay. and stuff. And so he's been great at talking through, um, talking to guys and, and starting to build that connection. And uh, he's a great guy. Uh, you can tell, like, the drive and the term, determination that he has to, to win and come to Pittsburgh and, and, and win some playoff games for us, so, which is always um, great to be a part of. And um, I think he's going to fit our culture in our locker room uh, really well. And uh, obviously, you know, I had some bad blow adjusting for a little bit, being committed with me <laughs> at State. And then, you know, decommitting to go to Ohio State. And, you know, he beat us. Or well, he went to Georgia, then he went to Ohio State. But, he, I mean, he beat us right. two, five, two years that I was there. Um, you know, he's, I have the ultimate respect. I've heard nothing but great things about him. And, um, he's a hell of a quarterback. So, um, you know, we're, we're we're looking forward to this year. It has, like, I don't know if you've realized this. I might be about to make you feel a way older than you are, but you are the longest tenured pass catcher currently on the Pittsburgh Steelers. You're the only one left <laughs> from the 2021 or previous yeah. draft classes uh, amongst the pass catchers, which is just crazy to think. Do you feel that pressure at all? Like, do you feel like this is a year where maybe you got to take on more of a leadership role because there's been so much turnover and you still are here? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, you know, I, I think, this past year, um, you know, being hurt for, you know, five weeks and some five games, it kind of made me like take a back seat and kind of help 
see how I can help the team uh, continue to go forward, and especially the tight ends and stuff. So I think I kind of picked up that leadership role. Um, you know, I was, I was a two-time captain at Penn State. I think it's an adjustment coming in from college to the league as, as being a leader because you have to gain that respect from your teammates and, um, you know, the fan base and, and, got, and other peers around the league. So as I get more older, um, obviously, like you said, one of the older, oldest pass catchers on the team now. Um, you know, I started to see that late in the year last year, um, especially when we were you knowing that hot win streak, uh, you know, my leadership abilities kind of stand up and, um, mm-hmm. you know, put that on my back and, and, and make sure guys are focused and rallying around each other, especially in games, you know, talking discussions on the sidelines, see what we see. So I think I've grown a lot in that aspect and I think I'm ready to, you know, take that leadership on as along with a couple other guys in the offense and, you know, really get this thing going. Yeah, we had a conversation, um, you and I did, just one-on-one talking about it, like, and talking about your desire to, to be in Pittsburgh and what it would mean to be part of a team, that, like, get back at that level. There's six Super Bowls, would love to add to that trophy, obviously, that seventh one. I, I, th- if you don't feel comfortable talking about this, obviously, you can just tell me to screw off, but you are going into a contract year. Is that something that has come up at all? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've also talked to my agent about it and, and myself and uh, my thoughts and stuff. And, um, you know, we've had, you know, talking to each other and just, uh, you know, I'm, I want to be in Pittsburgh for the rest of my career. Um, hopefully, you know, it shapes out the next ways and, 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 you know, next year, this year, whenever it happens, um, you know, I want to uh, continue to um, play for Pittsburgh just because they remind me of, Pittsburgh reminds me of where I'm from and how I was raised and, mm. and going and growing up and going through the hard times and good times together. And I feel like Pittsburgh media and fan base and, and everyone kind of does that together. So I feel very at peace and very comfortable in Pittsburgh. So hopefully um, it shakes out the way that I want it to, um, you know, in the next coming year or wherever, whenever that may be. You hear that a lot from, from guys that maybe didn't grow up in Pittsburgh, but have kind of been adopted by the city through whatever sport it is that they just come in here and then they, it it becomes their home or or at least a second home. And you talking about the way that you compare it to your hometown and just feeling that vibe. I mean, that's awesome, but you're, you're kind of putting that in your agent's hands. Like, has there been conversations with the team to this point or just you and your agent talking? I just met my agent. Um, you know, I'm not going to get into that right now. There's a time and place for that, but, uh, yeah, it's, 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 I'm happy with where it is right now. Okay, cool. Um, oh, I wanted to ask you too. You mentioned you were catching some passes out in San Diego. Was that just you and Russ, or was there like a group of guys? Like, were there other pass catchers there? Uh, yeah, it was me, um, uh, Van Jefferson. Uh, he was a great dude. Um, he looked great. And uh, Also Cal- new to the team? Cal- Cal- Austin was there, so he looked, he looked really good too. So it was us three, and um, we were looking forward to you know continuing that and continue OTAs and, and get more reps and stuff. That was another one of my questions. Well, kind, well, you didn't fully answer it, but I wanted to ask, obviously, with Deontay Johnson being traded and now Van Jefferson, Quez Watkins, uh, you mentioned Van Jefferson being part of that group. What, what are your first impressions of him and what he could bring to the team? Yeah, uh, you know, Van, Van, Van's uh, a big dude. Um, you know, he's, he's physical. You can tell by the way he runs routes. Um, he attacks the ball. Um, you know, he's, he's, he's really good dude to be around, and he's going to be really good for our locker room, and, um, you know, he catches the ball great, and he runs great routes. And his football intellect is um, really impressive. With obviously his dad growing up and being a coach and being around his dad and stuff, so it was, it was great to kind of work out with him and, and chop it up with him. I don't know how. I, I want to ask you how this works. So your positional coach still coming over, but there was a lot of roster turnover and a lot of turnover within the coaching staff. But for you, somebody that is a pass catcher, so do you, are you also in in wide receiver meetings at all? Like, do you have any interaction with Zach Azani, or will you have any interaction with Zach Azani? Have you yet? Because from from what I've gathered and looking at his track, everybody talks about how hard of a coach that he is, and like it taking a specific type of player to play under him. I just wonder if you've like had any interaction yet with him yet, or have kind of felt that. Yeah, um, I was actually in Pittsburgh well probably three weeks ago. I, I went uh, there for the week just to work out and, and meet all the new strength cat uh, strength coaches and and all the offensive good staff. And um, you know, I'm excited to get going. Um, you know, they also married guys. And to answer your question, I I, I Last year, I mean, I met with um, the receivers, the receivers coach, like the, okay. the skilled guys to like group install plays and, and pass functions and stuff. Um, so I'm assuming that'll probably be the same this year. Um, just kind of be on the same page and, and talk what we're seeing in depth and all like different kind of nuances in the plays. But uh, yeah, I met Coach Z. He's, he's, a, he's a great dude. And you can definitely tell he's fiery and intense. But uh, 
you know, it's going to be great for, for uh, you know, our team. Great, great first name, by the way. I mean, I was on board immediately based just based off of his <laughs> name. But, um, and then, of course, I got to ask about the main guy for the offense, Arthur Smith, coming in, bringing in what seems like is going to be a very different offense from what you've been accustomed to in Pittsburgh. What are your What are your first impressions there? Have you had conversations with Arthur Smith yet? And what do you feel like your role, if anything, is going to change within that? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've had a lot of um, conversations with, with, with Coach Smith, and uh, you know, he's he's it's been great. Um, you're looking at the Preliminary stuff on the offense, um, you know, it looks great. Um, you know, obviously, Titans typically are going to be heavily used in the system, and I'm excited for that expanded role. Um, you know, I'm excited to, you know, prove myself every single day in OTAs and camp and stuff to earn those reps and earn those, um, you know, targets and stuff. And I'm looking forward to that. Um, so it'll be good. It'll be good. Great. Okay. Um, now I want to get to some fan questions and then, uh, Pat, Tyler didn't tell you, I didn't tell you, but Tyler wants to play a little game with you after we get through <laughs> this set of questions. Um, Jeff Slattery says difference in similarities that you see between James Franklin and Mike Tomlin. Yeah. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, similarities. Um, I think, you know, that's why I've had, um, some success, you know, um, in my college career and early on in my pro career is because, you know, their kind of messages are, um, very similar, um, you know, with Coach Franklin, it was all about the culture and all about the team. Um, and the same with, with, with Coach Tomlin. And, uh, you know, kind of mirroring those philosophies uh, really helped me. And, you know, Coach Franklin helped me kind of shape who I am um, and round out, like, the uh, morals and things I go by uh, for my career. So uh, Coach Tomlin echoing that and obviously, like, me picking up on new things with Coach C. Uh, it's been great. Um, you know, there's a lot of similarities. And um, differences, though, I would say Tomlin – has Coach D has more like toddlerisms, as you'd say, obviously. Um, but Coach Franklin doesn't really have like the, those cool, like little cut your eyelids off, like don't play all that kind of stuff that like makes you like kind of go. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, Joe Money says, with Arthur Smith's offensive steam relying so much on establishing the run game in order to set up play action, how do you see yourself fitting in as a run blocker first and receiving threat second? Is that something that you are going to embrace? Yeah, um, I'm embracing a lot. Um, you know, obviously, I've been pretty inconsistent. Uh, you know, I can, I'm self aware. I've been pretty inconsistent with my uh, blocking. You know, I've had uh, yeah, I deleted uh, some tweets before you came on. Not him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've had some. You know, some 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 situations where obviously it wasn't in my favor, and obviously I've, I've seen that. I've, I've dealt with it. Uh, I've seen it all. Um, so I'm um, obviously you know taking my game to the next level in that aspect and. And figuring out how I can get the job done. I think, you know, later in the year, like the last five games of the year, when I finally got back yep. going, um, you saw that. Um, so I got to continue to watch that film, build on that, um, you know, and, and continue with my offseason work. I've done a lot of, you know, upper body strength training, lower body strength training, so my typical stuff. But getting with my uncle was actually an offensive line coach in college. He was, and so he was around by me. So just getting with him once or twice a week. And just going over footwork and angles and just basic stuff, just to continue to, you know, hone in on that and build on that. Yeah, that's all. I will say, I was going to say the same thing that you just said if you didn't, just to kind of prop your blocking up a bit. I thought when you came back from injury, that last stretch was really good. I mean, especially, I thought, I think it was the Seattle game to me really popped. But yeah, it was the Seattle game because when you guys, like, as a team, pretty much carried yeah. Najee in, like, the last seven yards from the goal line into the end zone and you were kind of at the forefront of that i was like i feel like pat's really come on as a blocker ever since coming back from injury so uh hey we're yeah. on the same page here I appreciate that. that i think i think you can do with that like i think overall i think there's um this is good like insight is like obviously everyone's in a development process of their career and so it happens it clicks with people in different ways and so you know receivers that might click to a certain release in a certain way you know what i'm saying so as a development of a player it's good to kind of see like your growth and, and see where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, I remember I actually got into an argument with somebody about your blocking back after your rookie year. Yeah. Because you graded out by PFF as like the best pass blocking tight end. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was like, and I was like, okay, that's great. <laughs> Why the hell is he pass blocking? I want him running yeah. routes. No, so, like, no, okay, no, but for real. <laughs> I, mean, I think I had like three reps that. Year That's old. what I'm saying. Yeah, like I was like, okay, is there not like a a certain number to be yeah. eligible for this? Or I, I had help on every single one of them. So hey, it, didn't like hey, it was just quality uh, over quantity. Exactly. That's, hey, <laughs> when you uh when you go into contract negotiations, pull up that post <laughs> and be like, you see this? 
Absolutely. <laughs> um, this I love this name by the way because if you if you ever come across Steelers Twitter, you see that there's a bunch of accounts like this. Bettensburg. So Keanu Benton has a Bettensburg account here, a fan account after him. But I do like oh, the question. Quick, quick shout out to Pickensburg. That dude's a beast. He's funny, man. Oh, my. All right. We got a Pickensburg <laughs> shout funny, out. Man. He's funny. <laughs> I, I saw that you did follow him. So, and yeah. he's, dude, he has to have notifications on for like everybody, right? Like, especially the Ravens, Marlon Humphrey. He oh. replies like within five seconds to oh. their post. <laughs> oh, but. Yeah. Um, anyway, Bettensburg says, what is your favorite Steelers memory? Doesn't necessarily have to be a game, just favorite memory in your time with the team. Uh, uh, you know, I think uh, my favorite time, oof, my favorite time is honestly just, you know, the OTAs and like the camp, like leading up into the year, because you're kind of with your, with the guys on the team and you're building relationships with the guys on the team and getting to know like who you're going into, you know, a grind with, um, for you know, six months of the year or so. Um, that's probably my favorite time is getting to know the guys on the team and um, probably, that, probably that. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, and then this is the last one I got before we go to uh, Tyler's fun little game he wants to play. Uh, this is a fun one, not football related. What's your favorite spot to eat? Uh, Ala Famila. Famila. That was quick. Yeah, I mean, I there was I like a Italian. slight uh, of thought that's about that. Good, that's good Italian, man. All good. right. Can we get a – actually, I want to expand upon this. Can we get a top three? Top three. Okay, there's a there's a so Al Camilla. Um, there's a place like a, there's a, I like I like noodles like uh, like ramen and stuff. There's a really good place. Yeah. And, okay. Uh, what's it called? Uh, like uh, what's beyond the strip? Like uh, like the strip district and then what's beyond that? Like the, I forget I forget the area. But it's called uh, uh, Nan 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 Man. I've had that. That's that's okay. good. Stuff. Noodles. Um, also, shout out City Works. So City Works is a good place. Like, I always okay. go there uh, with my family and stuff because um, it has like big, you know, tables and stuff. So, City Works is pretty. Actually, I just thought of one more thing before Tyler yeah. plays the game. Because of the jerseys that are behind you, yes. one of those, Big Ben, the first quarterback that you guys yeah. play with. What's your favorite Big Ben story? Um, favorite Big Ben story that you can tell on here. Honestly, I think my favorite one was like this will always stick out to me is like this is kind of like how I learned like the Steeler way and who, how it is and who it is to be a Steeler. Is we were in the huddle in Cincinnati, I think it was like week 13, and we were getting killed by like 30. They scored like 20, 35 points in the first half, like it was. It was the middle yeah. of the oh, okay. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And we, middle of the third quarter, like, end third quarter, and, like, he looked at all of us in the huddle. And we were, we were I mean, you call us the old guys now, like, three years ago, we we're the youngest guys in the office. So we were full of rookies. And so um, he looked at us and, like, we, we don't give up. Like, we continue to fight. And that's, what, that's what a stealer is. And so that's kind of always stuck with me then, like, how in that moment I was, like, I kind of understood what it is to kind of be a stealer. Gotcha. Great stuff. All right. I was, I was actually going to bring up Ben too because of the wall. Shout out to that wall, by the way. Who's all yeah, who on that wall got first? Yeah. Because I see Owe. I see. Yeah. I that's so, Brock Bowers. Uh, Nick Bowers. No. He's, oh, uh, Nick Bowers. Yeah. He's actually I see from, Noah Fan. He's from Catania. I went to uh, Penn State with him. So we've got Ben. Okay. Uh, Odafe. You got Noah Fan. Uh, you got John Johnson, Zach McPherson, uh, TJ Hawkinson. Oh. Uh, over there, you got uh, Tim Boyle. Wait, why? What's up why with is this? Tim Boyle off, all off by himself? What's, this, what's with the spacing? Oh, so <laughs> this part <laughs> this part of the wall, I'm waiting on my other jerseys to be framed. Um, so that one I have. Uh, Gesicki. I have Pat Connaughton because we have the same trainer. He plays for the Bucks. Um, and then I have Gentry. Uh, two more, I think. I forget a little bit. Yeah. Got okay. it. Okay. Pretty you know what? Hey, my name. My name is Zach. We got Zach and Pat on this. I mean, this is basically <laughs> another form of. If you want me to go get a grill, grill and chilling. Have a grill and chilling. <laughs> Do you? Uh, okay. Did you? Was that something that was kind of forced upon you? Did you yeah. like it? Yeah, it was forced upon me. Uh yeah. <laughs> As you can tell by the show, I'm not more. I just kind of sat there and just sat there, and so yeah, it was fine. I mean, I liked it. Zach had fun with it. Um, I was poor, my boy, but yeah, I was kind of forced to do it. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Fair enough. All right, Tyler, take it away. Okay. Well, before I, I actually had a couple questions before mm -hmm. we get into the game and before we mentioned Ben, so we were talking about Ben. So I wanted to know in those last couple games, 
of the regular season in 2021. Like it, it was Cleveland first and then at Baltimore, <laughs> especially that Cleveland game being at home and mm-hmm. was going to be his last home game. Even as a rookie, like, did you guys feel the weight of the moment of that game, mm-hmm. knowing what it meant for Ben? Yeah, I was more nervous for that game than I've been probably for most of my Steelers games. Other than the playoff game in Buffalo this past year, that was probably my most nervous game just because, I mean, dude, he's been a Steelers legend for his whole career. He's going to go down for the Battle Hall of Famer. Like, you get a list of all these accolades, and it's like, okay, well, this is the last time they're going to play at the stadium. So I'm like, oh, God, dude, like, <laughs> please don't mess up or do anything again. So I was definitely nervous for that game. But, um, you know, he was he was awesome during it. He, you know, he calmed us all down. Um, yeah, he's, he's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it was it was pretty sick to watch as a fan as well. Um, yeah. So, uh, and then one more question to before it, and it kind of has to do with Ben as well, just because mm-hmm. you you played with Ben pretty much your entire rookie season. I think Mason got in there a little bit um, as well, but then you had a mixture of Kenny and Mitch and Mason for the next couple seasons. And I was just curious, um, like. Obviously, you guys aren't shy. You hear everybody talking about how like the offensive struggles. I wonder if is the quarterback um, like having no not as much consistency playing into uh, like some challenges offensively, or is that something that you guys weren't even thinking about? No, I mean I don't think we were thinking about it. Obviously, um, you know, as just as your comfort zone, you you always want to try and get as, as most reps as you can with your starting quarterback. Um, so it can get hard, but also it's just more. A lot of it, especially later in the year, is more like mental. Like, what do you see when they do this? And obviously, at that point, later in the year, when the quarterback changes kind of started happening like every week, every other week, um, you kind of got, um, you know, the sense of, you know, we got so much film uh, by other teams so we can kind of talk it up more than, um, you know, do it on the field and take reps. So, um, yeah, it's just more so, you know, uh, making sure you're on the same page. Okay. Okay. Okay, so we can get into this game. This game is actually it's a Pat Fryermuth game. So I wanted to play that with Do I Pat need to Fryermuth. play too or just Pat? I mean, if you know the answers to the questions, I guess you could play, but it's okay. mainly oh, this questions about me. This is questions about you. Oh, and man. I want to you know, know how well you know Pat Fryermuth. <laughs> oh, sweet. Okay. And so this is about your your high like high school, college and NFL career. There's like cool. five questions I pulled up. Cool. So we're actually going to start all the way back in high school. What was the name of your high school? I looked it up, and obviously I found the information, but which high school did you go to? I said two high schools, so I went to Batagia and Brooks. Which one are you talking about? Okay. Brooks. I'm talking about your – I'm mainly talking about your senior year. So. All right, so Brooks School, yeah, Brooks. Brooks School. Okay, so the first question in this game is, in your senior year, how many touchdown passes did you catch, and who was the guy throwing those passes? My senior year, uh, 11 touchdowns, and I – Seamus Lambert was throwing me a ball. Yeah, you actually – so you probably had 11 combined touchdowns, unless, at least, unless Max Preps is wrong. I had, no, I had a couple of like, rushing, yeah. Yeah, you did have some rushing touchdowns. Did they just throw well, you in there on not, like – on sweep? What about the or... creative in Arthur Smith's offense? Yeah. Some handoffs. Listen, I've been uh, vouching for that my whole career. Me and my whole prep is in Pittsburgh. <laughs> But okay, that was correct. Also, wait, correct. Seamus is the guy's first name, yeah. Is Seamus Lambert, Seamus Lambert, it's my best friend still to the day. He's gonna be pumped. Yeah, up. Shout out, shout out. He said he still has it, he just got solar surgery. He said he still has it. <laughs> I'll say, hey, what, uh, was he slinging it? The Steelers typically go into camp with four quarterbacks. Four quarterbacks. So <laughs> <practice> <laughs> <one>. <laughs> well, me and my boy, uh, group chat, we always tell him, like, dude, get ready, get back. <laughs> there we go. All right, next question. Obviously, you went to Penn State for college. Who did you score your first touchdown against? Illinois, I tripped Illinois. on the, I tripped on the one one yard line. I reach out. I heard you say trip. I thought you were saying what the play was. I thought you were gonna say trips. I no, was like, I, no, I came across actually Trace threw it to me. I came across on like a slide and he just tossed it to me. He caught it, I looked up, there was no one around, and I tripped on my own feet. And I had a, oh, was speaking it, of Trace, speaking of Trace, how do you feel about the song? Trace from Sorrow? Yeah. Uh, Trace from Sorrow? Uh, it's a good song, man. It's funny. We had a good time. Should we play that? Should we play that over the in the background <laughs> of the podcast? Add the audio. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is another Penn State related question. Um, so where do you rank? And, and you, you may know, you may not know. Where do you rank all time in Penn State's receiving yards as a tight end and also receiving touchdowns? And if you if you know where you rank and people are ahead of you, do you know who they are? Yeah, so I'm number one on the receiving touchdowns. Um 
I would like to put a statement out there that I'm, it's about to be broken by Tyler Warren, who's there now. Hell of a football mm-hmm. player, hell of a guy. But he's done it in like four years, maybe five. I did it in like 16 games, 17 games, something like that. So quality over quantity. I mean, as long as I like. <laughs> yeah, 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 there you go. Uh, and then um, <clears throat> second in receiving yards or third, I think it's going to be Mike Kosicki's obviously first. Yeah. And either Kyle Brady might be in front of me. So uh, you can clarify whether – so if you look on college football reference, he's listed as a wide receiver. But if you look up anything about him, he's listed as a tight end. Yeah. So Ted Qualick or Qualick, do you, have you heard of that uh, name? Yeah, yeah, Back yeah. in like the 60s? Yeah, yeah. The tight end award, Big Ten's name after him. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Okay. Well, there you go. Um, so he's number two. And yeah, Pat or, – or you're number three. Mike is number one. But I had to put an asterisk on this. Like you said, you only paid in like 16 games, like two and a half seasons, basically. If yeah. if you had a full that, that 2020 season, or if you stayed for four seasons, these records aren't being touched. I'm just going to be honest. I like it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're jumping to the NFL now. And I'm sure you, you knew the college one super easily. So I'm sure you know who you scored your first touchdown against in the NFL. Uh, the Bengals. Bengals. That seemed a little tougher than the college. Yeah, because I'm trying to think. Yeah, it was the Bengals. I think it, was I a we- it was a weird play. Wasn't it like a little pitch play? It was, like it was like two, oh, you, yeah. yeah, you went into the it was actually called Bengal. It's called Bengal left. Oh, jeez. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then last thing. This isn't as much of a question as far as I'm going to have you rank. So AFC North opponents. Yeah. R- rank who you think you have the most receptions to. Most to least against the AFC North guys. Or I have to have the most against the Bengals. Um, yeah, one hundred percent. Like eleven in one game. <laughs> it's not even. It's it's not even close. Yeah. By the way. Um, and then the second is going to go Baltimore, and Cleveland's probably going to be the last. Okay, you know yourself. You do yeah. know yourself. I mean, yeah. You- I mean, like going into like each AFC North game, I kind of like know like okay, well, this is the main because we know them so well. We play them all the time. Like we know. Yeah. Coverage is going to be in and stuff, so it's kind of hard. Like certain looks that Cleveland does benefits the receivers more than it benefits. And so it all varies. The best yeah, individual go. play might have been against Cleveland, though. Yeah, touchdown reception. Yeah, yeah. That, was good. that was good. That was good. That was sweet. That was a sweet touchdown. It was. Yeah, but overall <laughs> game too. I, I I think back to the game that you had this just this past season against. I think it was the second game against the Bengals. Yeah, you had like nine receptions for. Uh, like no, 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 no. It was, it was the first one. The second, they were just so close together. Or was the second the one was one? on. Yeah. No, the first one I had like 120 yards. In the second game, yeah. I had catches, no targets. <laughs> <laughs> the second one was the Pickens game with Rudolph. Yes, yes, George. Like, okay. Right then it was Christmas. the first game. Well, that's what I, I just assumed it was the second game because it's later in the season. But yeah. right. They were yeah. very odd. No, schedule. I get that. But yeah, the Bengals, and it's not even close 29 yeah. receptions, 336 yards, two touchdowns. Against the Ravens, you have 17 receptions, 169 yards, and a touchdown. And the Browns is 13 catches, 116 yards, and a touchdown. All, all very good. But, I mean, you, when you see orange and black, you just may, make it go up a gear. I mean, it, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's not even close. Yeah, yeah. Also, one last shout-out to Se- Seamus Lambert. Again, <laughs> for <laughs> high school quarterbacks, Brooks School. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to send this over to him to make sure he yes. sees uh, him getting a shout out. Um, actually, I said that was going to be the last thing, but I just thought of something. I got to get an offensive player's perspective on this. The hip drop tackle being yeah. banned. What is your thought? Yeah, uh, it's uh, you know it's it's hard. It's going to make it extremely hard for for defenders. Obviously, um, obviously, like I like it because me being a bigger guy, like it's. You get the smaller DBs on you, like they typically like to hit drop tackle. I mean, I was actually looking back on film from plays I kind of remember um, throughout my career. And I've like looked at like, I think I had like a nine or 10 play cut up of, of the past two seasons of just like hit drop tackles. I know I had two against Buffalo in the playoffs. And so obviously I like it from my health standpoint, but um, you know, make it harder. You're obviously gonna make it harder than defenders. I feel for them. Um, you know, it's going to be hard, but I guess you just got to run a few in contact. <laughs> yeah, so I don't, I mean, that's not really, you're never taught to tackle that way. Like 
even at like the lowest levels of football all the way up. So like, I don't necessarily have a problem with them banning it. I guess my issue is, is it going to be called properly in the NFL? You're, like, you're putting another decision in the officials' hands, like another judgment call. Yeah, maybe, maybe like they have it. Like I think, especially like roughing the past or like that and hip drop tackle. There needs to be like an expedited, expedited like review process like if they throw a flag and it, and then they're just yeah. looking like oh that's not a drop tackle but like you know what i'm saying if that if that makes sense i think they should be on rough in the past Absolutely. and hit drop i agree that reminded agree. me you remember whenever pass interference could be reviewed for that, that was, one year man that, that was, was uh that was nuts oh yeah that I mean, was uh 20 2019 i believe i think that was the year before yeah, two years before pat came in so it was he never experience that part but, of it, but i mean i know i know they were trying to do the right thing but i, I remember as a, especially as a steeler fans the the call on joe hayden the one game against was it the saints yeah it came into it came into play um when we played seattle in the game where ben got hurt once mason was in yeah, yeah. we saw we saw pi get reviewed and i was like man this is not going to work and lo and behold it lasted one season so um all right pat i don't have anything else tyler if you don't we can't thank you enough for your time man we really appreciate you jumping on here with us um and actually we do want to give a shout out if you want to put pass along the information to you got a football camp coming up this summer uh we've kind of posted about it we're looking to sponsor a couple kids if people want to get in touch with us but if you want to you know maybe give us some info in terms of that yes yeah, so i was going to work is um have obviously kids camp um you know july 13th i believe the date is Seamus is actually going to be there. He's going to help coach out. And oh, so, I got – okay, I'll be there. Yep, I got to meet Seamus. So, uh, yeah, so if, if you're a family and, um, you know, want to come out and, and want to have Zach sponsor you, and, um, you know, all uh, prices are paid for. You get to come, kick with me, um, you know, super chill, get after it, have fun, get a T-shirt, get some souvenirs, get autographs. It's going to be a great time, great music, great people. It's going to be uh, It's going to be awesome. Great music. Wait, hold on, hold on. What are we, what are we got, talking about here, music wise? Just a nice little DJ. If you have some requests, I'll send my way. <laughs> okay, I, I, Trace McSorley potentially going to play. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> that's what we need. Absolutely. All right, Pat. Uh, we'll let you get out of here. We don't want to take any more of your time. But again, we can't thank you enough for joining us on this episode, giving us some insight into what is going on behind closed doors for the Steelers. Thanks for jumping on, man. We appreciate you. Absolutely, guys. Appreciate you having me on. Pittsburgh Steelers tight end Pat Frymuth joining the show. Can't thank him enough. Awesome conversation. Uh, great to get him on in the offseason right before the NFL draft. Just a couple weeks away. Tyler, yeah. what are your thoughts? Uh, you know, I, I thought it was awesome. Um, uh, awesome to hear about Seamus Lambert, obviously. Um, but <laughs> that's, you know, that's the main takeaway. That's what we're taking but, away from this episode. Yeah, but I, I, I thought one of the things that stuck out to me the most is like because we had in the notes to to – Ask him if he had even talked to the quarterbacks recently, but he was out there throwing with with Russell that's, Wilson. That's they're, they're, they're getting like, after it. Right are, I tweeted about that, and people are definitely uh, running with it already. There's a story that was already written about it on Steelers Now because I passed it along to them. Um, so yeah, that's a big deal that those guys were together. Uh, when I don't know where George was during that process, but uh, for you know Russ to get with some of the guys for Van Jefferson so quickly after signing to be a part of that. That's that's important stuff. So I'm glad they were able to get together. Cool hearing about, you know, his stories with Ben. And I knew that they were close in just the one season that they got to play together. You know, he was Pat's probably uh, wishing that he was still slinging it for the team. I mean, yeah. uh, hearing him tell the stories that he did when he was on Ben's podcast and stuff. Uh, they developed a really close relationship just within one season. So but great conversation all around. Um, happy that he's putting in the work too as a blocker like that. That was that was probably the part that I was most excited about hearing him talk there mm -hmm. or like the best conversation. Cause it was interesting hearing him talk about like the self-evaluation that he's done there working with his uncle, who's an offensive line coach. And then like explaining what he's working on too. like, man, really good in-depth stuff. Yeah. I mean, that, that shows that. And it was, it was funny too, that he knew and he, <clears throat> he's like, listen, I'm not, I'm not oblivious to it. I, I'm going to be honest. He's like, it could, could, could be better in the blocking department. Um, so this is the fact that he's able to recognize that and work on that. That's awesome as well. Uh, I, I think that another thing that stuck out to me was we always talk about, and people always talk about like the Steelers way is the Steelers way dead. Is it gone? But like, yeah. I feel like he is one guy that is as, as after talking to him, I feel like he understands what it means to be a Steeler. And that's probably something that he learned from Ben Roethlisberger as, as he mentioned as well. So that was really yeah. cool to hear about. Maybe the Steelers way is not dead as I've said in the past shows. Um, so 
maybe it could be revived. I, I, and I, I don't think that's a thing with the players. Like, I think that that's yeah what we see. The yeah, players, sure. I think, are still do it. Still do it. At least some guys within the organization. Some and that's probably why the other players might not be here anymore. And we didn't ask well, about that, that. But <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. You know, the way that the organization has kind of turned over some stones. Like, I feel like this is a way of trying to get back to that. So that's why I asked about Zach Azani. Known hard coach gets the most out of you. Uh, you got to be able to block if you're going to play for him. Same thing with Arthur Smith. So I think that we are going to see um, a different type of player targeted by the organization. Like it's going to be more than just talent that gets you on the field for this team. Yeah. So for sure. Uh, really good stuff. Nothing else to talk about Steelers wise. That was the entirety of our episode. Um, we're going to obviously still record Pirates and Penguins episodes. If you guys are into that, those will be popping up on your screen. Uh, be sure to follow us everywhere at around the 412. And again, as Pat said, I am looking for a kid or two that would like to do his football camp grades one through eight. Uh, if that interests you, be sure to get at me. We'll get you there free of charge. Go participate in a football camp. Uh, meet Pat, meet Seamus meet that whole crew, listen to some music and uh, learn some football skills. Uh, everything custom designs in the description, our friend Haley Wagner, small business, t-shirts, hoodies, a bunch of different customized stuff. Also, as Tyler mentioned, recently started doing tumblers. Um, so that's really cool. You can check out all that stuff at everything custom designs. I think it's her, is it her Facebook page? Facebook link. Yeah. That Etsy link yeah, it always, doesn't work yeah, anymore. That's, right. that, that's what it was. I couldn't remember what I knew. One of them was no longer active. So it's the Facebook page that we have linked. And then of course our sponsor, for this episode, for all of our episodes above Tyler, scrolling across the bottom, Keats Barbershop, located at 401 Burkitt Way, Suite 2 in Beaver, PA. Christian, Tony, Ashley, they do a great job over there. Uh, old school vibe. As soon as you step in, again, Keats Barbershop, 401 Burkitt Way, Suite 2 in Beaver, PA. Thank you, everybody that watched or listened to this. If you want to see more of this type of stuff, let us know. We're going to keep trying to do things like this. It's been a while since we had uh, a guest. Um, of Pat's caliber on the show. I think Tyler said it's been like 10 months since it wasn't just him and I. So great to get Pat on here, but we want to try to do more stuff like this, especially in the off season when you have some opportunities to do so. So hit us in the comments with who you'd like to see on the show. If you're on social media tag, who you want to see on the show, let them know that you want them to come on all that good stuff. Again, follow us at around the four one two wherever like subscribe, hit that notification bell, hit us in the comments and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.